All right, folks, uh, time to, to hit one of the biggest topics in calculus, section 2.4, the derivative of a function. In this section, the objectives we're going to focus on will be objective one, computing an instantaneous rate of change. That's something that we saw in, in section 2.3, uh, how to distinguish an average rate of change versus an instantaneous rate of change. Objective two, we're actually going to compute a derivative. Objective three, we'll, we'll then apply the derivative. Then objective four, we're going to compute the derivative of a function. And then uh, finally, objective five, we're going to analyze non-differentiable functions or where derivatives do not exist. So to get us started, um, Remember in section 2.3, we did talk about the difference between an average rate of change and an instantaneous rate of change. And we looked at how we could approximate instantaneous rates of change. Well, that all was laying the foundation, that approximation of an instantaneous rate of change. It was laying the foundation for the following. We can say the instantaneous rate of change of a function f at x is equal to the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f at x. And it is given by, well, you see instantaneous rate of change equals slope of the tangent line equals the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, provided the limit exists. So. Before we go any further, remember f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That gives us an average rate of change. That gives us the slope of a secant line through two points on the graph of the function. So putting that little limit statement out front, the limit as h approaches 0, means we're, we're letting those two points, well, we're letting them basically get as close together as possible. And the secant line becomes a tangent line. And we'll be dealing with this quite a bit, um, you know, for the first half of, of this course, uh, knowing that the units of measure of uh, the instantaneous rate of change are units of F per units of X. It's the word per that's important. It's a rate like miles per hour. That's a rate, dollars per year. Those are rates. So let's do a very uh, friendly first example. For the function f of x equals 2x squared plus 6, let's determine the instantaneous rate of change at x equals 3. So I'm going to head off to the chalkboard. Make sure you have this written down. And we're going to determine exactly the instant rate, instantaneous rate of change of this function at x equals 3. All right, here we go, folks. In this one, uh, you were given the function 2x squared plus 6, and you were asked to determine the instantaneous rate of change at x equals 3. Now, remember, the instantaneous rate of change is the same thing as slope of a tangent line. So we need to do the slope of the tangent line, which we just saw is given by the limit as h approaches 0 f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. But since, since we know x is 3, I'm going to put 3 in place of the x. So that would be uh, f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 all over h. So now we have a little bit of algebra to do, just a little bit of work. So it's not that bad. We're just going to take our time with it. So f of 3 plus h. So 3 plus h comes in for the x. So that gives us a 2 times a 3 plus h squared plus 6. That's f of 3 plus h minus f of 3. So now the 3 comes in for the x. So let's see. Let's, we can do this quickly. 3 squared is 9. 2 times 9 is 18. 18 plus 6, 24. So continuing, just doing some more algebra. 
We should FOIL this out, 3 plus H times 3 plus H, and 3 plus H times 3 plus H, let's see, that's a 9 plus a 6H plus an H squared. And look, I can clean this up a little bit. 6 minus 24, that's minus 18. And yeah, I'm going to pull this up here. So we have the limit as H heads off to 0. So next up, I would distribute the 2. So I distribute the 2, and I get an 18 plus a 12H plus 2H squared minus 18 all over H. And I look in the numerator, you can combine some like terms. 18 minus 18, that's 0. So we have the limit as H approaches 0 of 12H plus a 2H squared over H. That's right, we still have an indeterminate form 0 over 0, so in the numerator we need to factor out an H. So the limit as H goes to 0, factor out an H. And then once we could factor out the H, now we can cancel it out. And that leaves us with the limit as H approaches 0 of 12 plus 2H. Now we substitute 0 for the H, so we'd have 12 plus 2 times 0, which leaves us with 12. So the instantaneous rate of change of this function at x equals 3 is 12. Keep in mind that's also the same thing as saying the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line would be 12. So, Let's head on back to the slides and let's see what's next. All right, so in that example, um, we were able to do it. Now it's time to, to look at this big definition for a derivative. So here it is. For a function f, we say the derivative of f at x. And that's how it's denoted. And that's uh, red f prime of x. The derivative f prime of x is defined to be f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, provided the limit exists. So it's just the limit of the difference quotient. It's not too bad. So one more time, I'm going to say the derivative gives us an instantaneous rate of change of f at x. It's giving us the slope of a tangent line. Tangent line slope, instantaneous rate of change mean the same thing. So let's see what this example is. Let's determine f prime of 2 for the function f of x equals 4x squared minus 1 half x, and we'll interpret the result. So. Write this down in your notes because I'm heading off to the chalkboard to work through it. All right, we've just been introduced to uh, one of the big, main, huge definitions in all of calculus, the definition of the derivative. So in this example, we were asked to find f prime of 2 for the function f of x equals 4x squared minus 1 half x. So just following the definition, f prime of 2 equals the limit as h approaches 0, f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 all over h. You see we have, you know, it's just some algebra we have to do now. So we have, all right, first off, the f of 2 plus h. So we take 2 plus h, we toss it into the function for x, so that gives us a 4 times 2 plus h squared minus 1 half times 2 plus h. Minus, okay, now f of 2. See if we can just do this, uh, you know, pretty quickly. So f of 2. So we put 2 in for the x's. Well, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 
1 half times 2 is 1, so 16 minus 1 is 15. That well, wasn't too bad. So just like we saw in the prior example, we need to FOIL this out. So we'll go ahead and FOIL this, and I'll probably distribute this negative 1 half at the same time. So FOILing, 2 plus h times 2 plus h, that's uh, a 4 plus a 4h plus an h squared. Distributing the negative 2, so we have a minus 1 minus 1 half h minus 15, uh, that's ugly, all, o all over h. Okay, now we distribute the 4, so we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 16 plus 16h plus a 4h squared. I'm going to combine these like terms. So negative 1 minus 15 is negative 16, all over h. And let me pull this up here. All right, in the numerator, let's see what we can combine. Uh, first off, the 16 minus 16, it's gone. Uh, we have a 16h minus a 1 half h. So those are like terms we can combine. So 16 minus 1 half, I believe that's uh, 31 over 2. So we have a 4h squared plus a 31 over 2h, all over h. And then yes, in the numerator we factor out an h. And then once we factor it out, we can cancel it out with the h in the denominator and leaves us with this, which now we can handle via substitution. Substitute 0 for the h. 4 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 31 over 2 is 31 over 2. So what does that mean? Well, you know, it's interpretation. It, gave, it gives us an instantaneous rate of change. It tells us for the function uh, uh, 4x squared minus 1 half x, the instantaneous rate of change at x equals 2 is 31 over 2, 31 halves. It also tells us that if we look at the graph of the function 4x squared minus 1 half x, at an x value of 2, a tangent line at that point would have a slope of 31 over 2. So it's not that bad of a process, you know. But let me just kind of point the following out. What if, hypothetically, what if I were to say, all right, great, we just found the slope of the tangent line at 2 to be 31 over 2 for this function. What's the slope of the tangent line at x equals 3, x equals 5, x equals negative 2, x equals negative 7, uh, x equals 25, x equals negative 71. I wouldn't want to go through this process all of those times for all of those different numbers. So let's head on back to the slides to see, you know, when I'm, I'm foreshadowing how we can maybe just do this once. But let's head back to the slides. We're going to get a little bit of vocabulary stuff. Um, then we'll be looking at another example. All right. We saw that the uh, derivative there in that uh, last example, it gives us the slope of a tangent line. Um, let's look at a, quick, at a quick example of how we can apply the derivative. So here in this example, uh, we have the gross revenue from commercial casinos, uh, where x is the number of years uh, since 2000, I have a typo there, I should say since 2000, uh, and f of x, it is in millions of dollars. It's given by the function f of x equals negative uh, 125.81x squared plus 1906.21x plus 22699.09.
And the source for that uh, is the U.S. Census Bureau. We are being told that the derivative of this function is negative 251.62x plus 1906.21. And trust me, that really is the derivative of the function. So given the derivative, we're going to evaluate f prime of 4 and interpret. Uh, so please write this down. I'm going to head off to the chalkboard. This evaluating and interpreting a derivative, it's going to be with us for quite a while through, through this calculus class. So uh, pay particular attention to how we will interpret um, you know, derivatives in general. All right, before we generalize, like I said at the end of the last example, and uh, uh, you know, look at how to do things where we don't have to evaluate or we don't have to run through the definition of the derivative for multiple different values of x, I thought we'd look at a quick example that uh, applies the derivative. So I'm not going to read all the words to you. You should have written them down, but you were given this function and you were told that's the derivative of the function and you're asked to evaluate and interpret f prime of 4. Evaluate and interpret f prime of 4. These are directions you're going to see a lot going forward. So let's take it a step at a time. First, let's evaluate f prime of 4. Well, we know we're going to put a 4 in here for the x. This is f prime of x. So 4 comes in for the x. And when I use my calculator to evaluate f prime of 4, I get 899.73. Okay, now the interpretation part. Let's write a short, sweet sentence on what this means. So the first thing I'm going to interpret in writing my interpretation is the x value of 4. The x value of 4. Well, we were told x is the number of years since 2000. So 4. That's 4 years since 2000. That tells me what year we're talking about. We're talking about 2004. Okay, now the function itself represented the gross revenue from commercial casinos. So in 2004, the gross revenue from commercial casinos Get a verb, was. All right, now the next word we write down, the next word you will write down, the next word every interpretation will have, and when interpreting a derivative, that you write down, it's going to be one of two words. It's either the word increasing or the word decreasing. Since f prime of 4, since it was a positive number, the word I put next is increasing. If this had been a negative number, that word would have been decreasing. So let me underline that because it's like a fill in the blank. You have one of two choices to always put here when interpreting a derivative, increasing or decreasing. So continuing. In 2004, the gross revenue from commercial casinos was increasing, and you should write this down almost every time, at a rate of, and that was this number, but that number is, uh, see, f of x was in millions of dollars. So I'd say it was increasing at a rate of, I put the dollar sign, then the word million, so people know to read that as millions of dollars. And then we need, 
It's a rate. Remember, the derivative is a rate. It's a rate of change. It's an instantaneous rate of change. So I need to get appropriate union, units. So it's at a rate of 899.73 million dollars per year. So you're going to be doing a lot of this. Evaluating a derivative and interpreting. Don't forget that. And don't forget there should be a rate, language of rates at the end of your interpretation. So to give you some more practice on this, right now, I'd like you in section 2.4, I'd like you to try number 81. So uh, you know the drill, pause the video, do number 81, restart the video, and uh, I'll be here at the chalkboard working through it. All right, number 81, I'm not going to read all those words. You know you have the book. Uh, and I put in there, you know, that, you know, you were given a function and I told you that's what the derivative is. And you were asked to evaluate and, and interpret f prime of 15. So f prime of 15. See, I put 15 in there for the x. And when I use my calculator, I end up getting f prime of 15 is 6.07. So now what does that mean? Well, x represented the number of years since 1990. So 15, 15 years since 1990, that's 2005. So in 2005, the amount of power generated by nuclear power plants and that was uh, that was in the United States was all right folks that's a positive number so that means it was increasing of 6.07 and the units here were billions of kilowatt hours and that's abbreviated as BKWH so it was increasing at a rate of 6.07 billion kilowatt hours it's a rate so I better have per year that's all there was to this one so let's head on back to the slides and see what's next in this section all right so hopefully um you know you, you started to see the process for evaluating and interpreting a derivative uh you know one more time you know when you evaluate a derivative you know key things that you want to have in your interpretation will either be you know the word increasing or the word decreasing um and then the phrase at a rate of and then make sure you have those appropriate units at the end. Remember, it's a rate, so it's going to have something per something. I'm going to just go through a couple of uh, quick facts about the derivative. First, the derivative of a function, well, it's also a function. I mean, it kind of has similar notation to function notation, uh, you know, f prime of x. For any value c that's in the domain of the derivative, that's in the domain of f prime, f prime of c, it gives a number, and that number tells us the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals c. So f prime of c gives us the slope of the tangent line at x equals c. Also, f prime of c gives the instantaneous rate of change of the function at x equals c. Please remember, tangent line slope, instantaneous rate of change, they are, um, uh, they're interchangeable. They mean the same thing. And finally, when we go through the process of finding a derivative, that process has a name. It's called differentiation. 
So let's check out an example. For the function g of x equals 3x squared plus x plus 1, uh, we're going to do some, a few things here. We're going to find g prime of x. And then once we know g prime of x, you know, we can quickly find g prime of negative 4, g prime of 3. You know, we could quickly find g prime of any value once we know the derivative, g prime of x. So um, let's head off to the chalkboard and uh, let's do this example. All right, hey, this one we were given the function g of x equals 3x squared plus x plus 1. We were asked to find g prime of x and then g prime of 4 and g prime of 3. So actually, folks, once we know g prime of x, we can quickly get g prime of 4, g prime of 3, g prime of 2, g prime of negative 7. We can find the derivative for any value of x. So this is called finding the derivative in general. So g prime of x, well, it's the limit as h approaches 0. Let me write down g of x plus h minus g of x over h. If this had been f of x, this would be an f, and this would be an f. But let's continue. It's the limit as h approaches 0. All right, the g of x plus h. We're evaluating function g at x plus h. So we take x plus h, we toss it in for the x's. So x plus h gets tossed in for the x's. And that gives us a 3 times an x plus h squared plus x plus h plus 1. That's the g of x plus h minus g of x. Well, there's g of x, so I better put that in parentheses so I don't make a careless sign mistake. And let's see, I have some, I have some algebra to do. So I have to FOIL this, x plus h times x plus h. That's an x squared plus a 2xh plus an h squared. And then we have a plus x plus h plus 1. I might as well distribute that negative 1 while I'm here. All right, now I have to distribute the 3. So I have the limit as h approaches 0. 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared. Uh, let's see, do I have anything here I can combine? Hey, look at that. x minus x. So that's gone. 1 minus 1, that's gone. So, well, that condensed down kind of nicely. So I'm left with, uh, what, an h um, minus 3x squared all over h. Well, let's see. Is there anything else in the numerator that we can... Any like terms we can combine before continuing. 3x squared minus 3x squared. That's gone. So let me pull this up here. We have the limit as h goes to 0. 6xh plus 3h squared plus h all over h. 3x squared cancel out. So in the numerator, we'd factor out an h. And since we factored it out, we can now cancel it out. And now we use the substitution principle. Substitute 0 for the h. See, that would be 6x plus 6 times 0 plus 1. So that gives us 6x plus 1. There's the derivative. That is the derivative. It is g prime of x. The derivative for this function is 6x plus 1. The derivative is a function. It looks like a function. It is a function. 
Its purpose is to tell us an instantaneous rate of change, to tell us slope of a tangent line. So now if I want to know the slope of the tangent line at x equals 4, I just put 4 in for the x. And I get the slope of the tangent line at 4 is, well, 6 times 4 plus 1, 25. Gives me a little rule that tells me quickly instantaneous rates of change. If I want to know the slope of the tangent line at x equals 3, I just toss 3 in here for the x and I get 19. What's the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2? 6 times 2 plus 1, it's 13. Finding the derivative is going to be something we're going to do for uh, quite a bit of time here in this class. So I just want, to, I want you to practice one of these, finding the derivative. This is called by hand, the long way, using the definition. So I'd like you uh, here in section 2.4 to go to the exercises. I'd like you to try number 36. So pause the video, do number 36. Once you've done it, come back, restart the video. I'll be here at the board working through it, and hopefully you'll have the same thing as me. All right, number 36, you were given the function f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 1, and you were asked to determine f prime of x. Determine the derivative. So here we go. The derivative, f prime of x, equals the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x, all over h. So that's the limit as h approaches 0 x plus h squared minus 3 times x plus h plus 1, that's the f of x plus h, minus the quantity x squared minus 3x plus 1, all over h. So doing a little bit of algebra, foiling this out gives us an x squared plus a 2xh plus an h squared, distributing the 3, negative 3x minus 3h, distributing the negative 1. All right, so hopefully we have some stuff in the numerator that will cancel out, that uh, when we combine the like terms, they disappear. Let's see, uh, x squared minus x squared. Well, they're gone. That's nice. Uh, 3x and the 3x, they're gone. In fact, the 1 and the negative 1, we had a lot of stuff cancel out. You know? So all we're left with in the numerator is a 2xh plus an h squared minus 3h. That's not too bad. So pulling it up here, and in the numerator, let's go ahead and factor out an h. And once we factor it out, we can cancel it out. And then we can use the substitution property. We get 2x plus 0 minus 3, 2x minus 3. So for the function, we have the derivative is 2x minus 3. Hopefully you got that. So, let's head on back to the slides and see what's next. All right, see, once we know the derivative of a function, whether it's f prime of x or g prime of x, we can quickly determine slope of tangent lines at any value of x. Just simply, uh, you know, evaluate the derivative of whatever the value of x is. So, this next example, let's go one more step. Let's get the equation of the line tangent to g of x equals 3x squared plus x plus 1 at x equals 3. So that, notice that's the same function from the prior example. Um, so, you know, we, we already know some information here in order to uh, do this example. But uh, please write this in your notes because I'm going to head off to the chalkboard and crank through this example. All right, folks, this example we're asked to get an equation of the line tangent to g of x 
equals 3x squared plus x plus 1 at x equals 3. So now look at that function. We just dealt with that function in our last example. In fact, in our last example, we determined that the derivative was 6x plus 1. We know the derivative tells us slope of the tangent line. So we need to know the slope of the tangent line in order to come up with an equation for the tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line is given by evaluating the derivative at 3. That's 19. So we know the slope of the tangent line is 19. The only other thing we need to know is the point of tangency. Well, we know the x value of the point of tangency is 3, so our point of tangency is 3, and whatever the function evaluated at 3 is. 3, so I put 3 in here for the x's to see what the y-coordinate is. So let's see if we can do this. 3 squared is 9. So 3 times 9 is 27. 27 plus 3 is 30 plus 1, 31. So folks, we know for this tangent line, we know the point of tangency. We know the slope. Why don't we use the point-slope form of a line to come up with an equation for this tangent line? So remember the point-slope form of a line. I know this is some really old algebra, folks. The point-slope form was y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. So we'd have y minus, well, that y1 is 31. Slope is 19 times x minus 3. So that's an equation of the tangent line, but we can go ahead and we could distribute the 19. Let's see, 19 times 3, that's 57. And we could add 31 to both sides to get, uh, what would that be, 26 minus 26. And we're probably used to seeing equations of lines in uh, this form, the slope-intercept form. So, to get an equation of any line, you need to know the slope of the line and a point on the line. To get an equation of a tangent line, you need the derivative, and you use the derivative to get the slope of the tangent line. So, to make sure you're kind of dialed into this, uh, I would like you all... I'd like you to try number 48 now. So uh, section 2-4 exercises, do number 48. So you know the drill, pause the video, um, do number 48, restart the video, and I'll, I'll be here to work through it. Hey folks, number 48, you were given the function x squared minus 3x plus 1, and all you were asked to do here was to come up with slope of the tangent lines at x equals negative 2, and at x equals 3. So you didn't have to come up with the actual equation of the tangent lines, just slope of the, of the tangent lines. Well, in number 36, we determined the derivative. That was one I asked you to practice. So in number 36, we determined that the derivative of this function was 2x minus 3. So the slope of the tangent line at x equals negative 2, that's just found by evaluating the derivative at negative 2. So you evaluate the derivative at negative 2, 2 times negative 2 minus 3, that's negative 7. The slope of the tangent line at x equals 3. That's found by just evaluating the derivative at 3. So you put 3 in here, 2 times 3 minus 3 is 3. Very quickly you can get slopes of tangent lines now once you know what the derivative is, the general derivative. 
Let's head on back to the slides and see what we have left in this section. All right, so we're hopefully getting dialed into the fact that the derivative gives, a, gives us the slope of a tangent line, uh, also known as an instantaneous rate of change. Uh, but let's finish off this section uh, by looking at when or where functions do not have a derivative. So this is our final objective. There are some functions out there in the world of functions for which the derivative does not exist at certain values. And they, these types of functions, they're called non-differentiable. So there's said to be non-differentiable at whatever the value of x is. You know, I'm going to ask you to look at example six and seven, um, you know, in, in the book. It highlights two functions and a value in the domain of each function where the derivative does not exist. So on your own, please read examples six and seven. And, you know, here's, a, here's an interesting little theorem. It says if your function is differentiable at x equals c, so that means the derivative does exist at x equals c, then f has to be continuous at x equals c. You know, another way to say that theorem is that if your function is not continuous at x equals c, then the function is not differentiable at x equals c. You know, a fancy way of combining all of this is to say differentiability implies continuity. So if you're differentiable, that implies you're continuous. Continuity does not imply differentiability. So just being continuous at some value of x does not mean uh, it's differentiable at some value of x. And then a function will not be dif differentiable at a value of x or at x equals c if the graph of the function has a sharp turn or corner, a vertical tangent line, or is not continuous at x equals c. So let's look at an example of this. Uh, for what values of x is this function graph not differentiable? So there's the graph of some function. Don't know what the function is. I don't care. So for what values of x is this function graph not differentiable? So I'm looking at this graph and I'm trying to look for points on the graph that would have uh, a sharp turn or a corner, a vertical tangent line, or not continuous. So, you know what, let's just do this one right here. I'm not going to go to the chalkboard. Um, so the first thing I, I'm going to look at, I'm going to say, well, look right here at x equals negative 5 sure looks to me like there would be a vertical tangent line right there at x equals 5. So at x equals negative 5, it's not differentiable. And I have one of them listed here, kind of, uh, you know, jumped the gun on you, sorry. At x equals negative 3, it looks like the graph makes a sharp turn where there's a corner. So it's not differentiable at x equals negative 3. Uh, hey, look at x equals 2. At an x value of 2, the graph is not continuous. Because it's not continuous at x equals 2, it is not differentiable at x equals 2. And then finally, we have a vertical tangent line here at... Uh, x equals 4. And a vertical tangent line would be another another distinguishing feature of not being continuous. So it's not differentiable at x equals 4. So this the graph of this function, it looks like there are four values of x that it would not be differentiable. x equals negative 5, because there's a vertical tangent line. x equals negative 3, because there's a sharp turn or a corner. x equals 2, because it's not differentiable. And x equal, I'm sorry, x equals 2, it's not differentiable because it's not continuous. 
and at x equals 4. Vertical, vertical asymptote, so it's, you know, not continuous there as well. So those are the four values of x where the graph is not differentiable. Um, so going forward, you know, it's always nice to know where a function is not differentiable. Um, so when, when you're looking for non-differentiable, you're looking for where there's a vertical tangent line, such as in this graph at x equals negative 5. A sharp turn, like here at x equals negative 3, or where it's not continuous, x equals 2 or x equals 4 for this function. So that concludes this section on the derivative. Um, so you can uh, um, head off now and do the exercises here in section 2.4.